you're about to see an incredible human document. An encounter with forces that no one on this earth withstands. You may find it shocking, impossible. But it is nevertheless evidence of a universe beyond the power of our five senses. You know, the further man probes into outer space, the more riddles he uncovers. Take the matter of UFO, for example. That is to say, the unidentified flying object. What a heated controversy this phenomenon has provoked. Everybody's in the act, from the, the comic strip artist to the fiction fella, to the sober scientific sifting of all the known facts by responsible men. Some from the military, and some eyewitnesses who pilot our giant aircraft. And from all this sifting and all of this screening, certain events of the past years have been generally accepted as having happened. The physical evidence, however, is inclined to disappear into thin air. Sort of, well, like this. definite position report. Over Loon Lake, Mr. McCord. He said he completed the survey and was starting back, but it's his last transmission you've got to hear. What time did he call in from Loon Lake? 1520. And his last report? Before I called you, 1620. It's here on the recorder, Mr. McCord. I'll put it on and you can hear it. Anything he had to say isn't going to tell us where he is, is it, Cole? Of course, he couldn't obey orders and fly back on a reciprocal course. Oh, no, he must try and cut across all this mess. He said he could see the weather was going to part and he figured a direct course was quicker. Well, it hasn't gone to part yet. Be here by now if he'd done as he was told. Now he's down somewhere in this garden spot. The whole operation is going to get set back on its duff while we try to find him. Mr. McCord, you'd better hear what Mr. Rand had to say. We'll have to wait till the morning. What's it supposed to be like tomorrow? Not too bad. altitude over Loon Lake? It was at 2,500. Just as I thought. Comstock Peak is 3,000. If he didn't change altitude, this is where we'll find him. Smashed on the side of it. But he would have changed altitude. What about the films he said he had? It's one of his better known habits. Wasting company film on the most fantastic pictures. Well, at least the tape will give us some idea where to look for him. He didn't mean he saw a mountain. I heard what he said, Cole. I happen to know him a great deal better than you. Tim! Tim! Do you read? I've just taken the most fantastic roll of film anyone ever heard of. It was right there, right in front of me. Out of the clouds, like, like, like the side of a mountain. Tim, do you read? I... There it is again, coming back, coming right at me! Oh, my! You better keep at it. If he's not too badly banged up, perhaps he can get some word out. If you hear anything, give me a call. I'll be in the office. Mr. McCord, how can a mountain come back at you? If you're not watching where you're flying, I assure you a mountain can come at you from any direction. You wish to see me, boss? Yes, come in, Jack. What a lousy night. You heard about Rand? Oui, c'est terrible. Oh, it's a bad night, a bad night. Yes, it's bad for a lot of reasons. 
All because he could never obey orders. Jack, how much more time have we got before we have to close up for the winter? It is a hard one to say. So far we have luck, not too much cold, but we can change all of a sudden. I got, I remember one yes, time. Yes, I know what she can do, and I remember lots of times, too. But well, you tell me, so I can tell the main office. One week, two, five. Yeah, I, I make a guess. Maybe three weeks. How far can you push the road in that time? To the rock face at point six, I think. Beyond the rock face to point seven. And I don't think I know. When we come back in the spring, I want to be this far. Maybe you give me twice as many men to do the job, huh? You've got all the men you need, Jack. Work them double shifts if you have to. Work them at night. Sure, we work them on a night like this. What kind of men you think we are? I thought you were road builders. That mine isn't going to do the company any good until we start taking ore out of it. We can't do that without a road. Both they will do the best he can, but he will be an aided man. <laughs> Boom. Listen, another thing. If I am to do the impossible, uh, I must have the helicopter. It's on its way over for number three by daylight. But you will be using it to locate Monsieur Rand, and that may take some time. Well, the beach craft will do the searching for Rand. It's on its way up from base headquarters. When it locates him, We'll borrow the helicopter long enough to go in and get him out. But would not the helicopter do a better job of searching than a big plane like that? You stick to the job of road building, Jack. Let me worry about finding Rand. It's a funny thing. I think maybe you don't worry half so much about it as the rest of us. I'm sorry you think that. Poor fellow, he's probably dead. He hit the mountain, huh? Yep, that's the way it looks. But not if it's something else? Doubt it. Nothing else very high in that area. We'll see in the morning. That is not what I meant. I mean, could he not have hit something... something else in the sky? Like what? No other planes around here. Well? Of course, it is impossible, but, well, Pierre, he became all excited. He, th he think he saw something in the sky, very strange looking, like uh, a big cigar, he says. You know, Pierre told me he saw last week a flying saucer. This week, it's a flying cigar. Next week, it ought to be something very special. You don't believe such things could happen, huh? No. Nothing not. Bob ran out of the sky, Jacques. But his own poor judgment. Oh, it's about time. We think he's down here on the mountain somewhere. But since his last known position was over Loon Lake, I'd suggest if you don't spot him on the mountain, you use it as a center point from which to expand your search. What about the chopper? Is it going to work with us? It's on its way over now from number three. Tim here has been in contact with Lawrence. He'll be listening in on your frequency. If you spot Rand, he'll move in and pick him up. I don't read you clearly. You mean the chopper isn't going to help us hunt for Rand? It'll just be bought in if we find him. That's right, Blake. But, sir, Lawrence in a helicopter can Let get in there. Let me explain it just once. Your plane can cover more territory faster than Lawrence and six helicopters. He and his chopper will be working with Jacques Botte on the roadside, right here. But, sir, a chopper could get Blake, in there. Blake, this weather isn't going to hold up for long. I suggest we stop wasting time. Rand's time. Just one other thing. Rand always carried a chute for some silly reason. If he survived the crash, he'll use it as a signal. So watch out for it. Any more questions? Uh, yes, sir. What about that plane you've got outside? Isn't it going to be used in the search? Not unless you want to look for two planes. It's got ignition trouble, and nobody seems to know the cause. Well, I could find the cause. I'm an A&E. &E. You'll find Ram first, Tobin, if... What are you doing up here, Ellen? Same old Paul. 
What am I doing up here? I want to help find my husband. Can we get started, please? Blake, did you have company permission to bring Mrs. Rand? I didn't think the situation warranted it. I'd like to cut the chatter and get in the air. Just a minute. Ellen, it's best that you stay on the ground. You'll be able to hear everything that's reported. But I want to go. I'm sorry. Since you're up here, you're my responsibility. There's no telling what the weather might do. And I'm not putting you in jeopardy. Or your own precious position. He's right, Ellen. We'll keep in close touch with Tim. But I want to help look for him. Better this way. never forgiven me, have you? Not even now. You got it all wrong, Ellen. Brand's down on that stuff. We could fly around him for years and never spot him. Be worse if there was snow. There's gonna be a lot of that soon. What's the matter with that guy McCord anyway? Doesn't he know a chopper was made he for knows. this kind of work? They fly lower and slower. Use your eyes more and your mouth less. Anybody'd think McCord had just as soon not find Rand. When's building a lousy road through this stuff more important than finding a man down in it? I'm going to go lower and try the side of the mountain again. You get on the horn and tell them we've traced Rand's supposed route from Moon Lake. All right. If we don't find anything, we'll start expanding our search from here. Negative. You're starting a square pattern search using the Lake and Mountains as opposite coordinates. of sympathy that I might offer would neither be appreciated nor believed. But I want you to understand one thing, Ellen. If I ever felt any bitterness about the way you walked out on me for Bob Rand, it doesn't enter into this. You never liked him. No, I never did. But that's beside the point. You tried to prevent him from coming up here to make the survey. True. Your husband could never obey orders. That's why we're looking for him now. If it weren't Bob, the helicopter would be out looking too. It could be the president of Siam, and that helicopter would be exactly where it is now, working with Jacques Boté. Saving a man's life is not as important as a job, is it? Unfortunately, both are important, for a lot of different reasons. And I have to use what I've got at my disposal to save both. How could I ever have loved you? Did you? You had a dandy way of showing it. Mr. McCord. Cole, this is Tobin. We've spotted something. Wait a sec. We think it's a chute. We can see the lines in a mess of trees. Tobin, this is McCord. Can you see Rand? Over. Negative, negative. We can just see his chute lines. If you can spare the chopper, Mr. McCord, we'll vector him in. I'll send the chopper right away. I think they found his suit.
I've never seen anything before like it in my life. I'll have it sent to the lab for analysis. It was hanging from all the trees like spider webs. It was very strange. You get back to the job, Jacques. We. Oui. It is too bad to find spider webs. You mean Angel's hair? Como? Let's not be cute. I'm not being cute, Mr. McCord, or maybe you'd like me to read it to you. April 15th, 1953, Auckland, New Zealand. A mass of strange white substance drifted down from the sky today over Angawanga. It covered fields, buildings, wires, trees, and fences for hundreds of yards around. Here's another one. November 16th, 1953, San Fernando Valley. A fluffy blanket, dead white, with delicate rope-like strands, maybe the San Fernando Valley's first physical contact with visitors from outer space. It is reported to have streamed like a lacy ribbon from a mysterious cigar-shaped craft that sped over the valley. Given the name of Angel's Hair, these mysterious filaments Let will Let me see that. Visitors from outer space. You stick to your radio, Cole. And you better listen to this again. Do you read? I've just taken the most fantastic roll of film anyone ever heard of. It was right there, right in front of me. Out of the clouds, like, like, like the side of a mountain. Tim, do you read? I, listen, there it is again, coming back, coming right at me. What happened? What happened? He hit the mountain or the ground. That's what happened. Or something hit him. He flying the guy you read about. Yeah, he sees. So Jack, will you stop talking this gibberish and get back to your job? And you keep your science fiction till after hours. Now, Jacques, get going when I tell you, will you? Perhaps... Just a minute, Paul. What did he mean about the film he took? Well, why didn't you tell us? What are you trying to do? Hey, God. Ordered if you like. In every instance where Angel's hair has been found, it disintegrates soon after being handled. How soon can you take off? Well, we can probably get off now. The main office wants you back as fast as you can get there. You mean we're calling off the search for Rand? No. Tobin's got my plane fixed. I'll use it. That'll be nice. Assuming that Rand survived crashing into the mountain, or running into a cigar from the planet Mars, do you suppose he or any other man could survive a three-day storm such as we just had? I don't know. Well, I do. It must be nice to be so sure of yourself, especially with another man's life. As I said, I'll continue the search in my plane. You've got your orders, Blake. You take Mrs. Rand with you. I think I've got it fixed now, sir. They've found him. Rand? A call comes to us saying they have found him, and by the blessed version, he is alive. Thank God. Who called Ellen? He said his name was Dr. Norton. Where they got bound? He, he has him in his home. He said a storekeeper found Bob wandering delirious. He said he'd been kidnapped. Isn't that silly? Where has the doctor got him, Ellen? That's silly, too. Bob was lucid long enough to tell him where to call me. He knew I'd be up here looking. The doctor said he was calling from a place called Wyatt. In the desert, over a thousand miles away. How is she? Pill worked. She's asleep. Why don't you try and psych out? Blake. 
Is it aerodynamically or meteorologically possible? He had about two hours of gas when he called in last. His plane cruised at 120 miles an hour. You figure it out. But with a strong wind, they don't make them that strong around here. But, but it, it, it couldn't be all that way. I just won't believe it. Perhaps half of believing is being able to accept the unusual. I remember something that happened to me a few years ago in the Air Force that reminds me of Rand. You mean the Ken Ross thing? Yeah, radar picked up a UFO over Lake Superior. They scrambled a night fighter after it. The two were seen to meet and join on the radar scope. Then the UFO took off like a bat and disappeared. No trace of the fighter was ever found. <laughs> Isn't it marvelous? The literature you young men read these days. Men from out of space. Stranger cases than that that have been sworn to. Even incidents of reported kidnappings. By men from Mars. Listen, I live with both feet on the Earth. Maybe your head in it, McCord. If you'd read the newspapers, you'd find that some astronomers claim that the moons of Mars are artificial. Oh, sure. Our moon is made of green cheese. We're on the verge of space exploration ourselves. Why is it so hard to believe that others might have beaten us to it? It's a pretty big place, chum. Now, maybe you're smarter than all the rest of us. Maybe you know what lies out there, huh? Better hold the phone till we hear from Rand. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you'd been here an hour earlier, I know. I suppose exposure to that desert out there is as bad as it is up in our country. Exposure? Exposure had nothing to do with it. Shock. Very deep shock is what he died of. But if he were out there for four days, he... he wasn't out there for more than a half hour. Joe Breen saw his parachute coming down at 11 o'clock. We had him in here in bed one hour later. The physical evidence is inclined to disappear into thin air. Bob Rann was found over a thousand miles from here, his last position report. Now, how could a small plane whose top speed was 120 miles an hour, carrying a two-hour supply of gasoline, possibly cover such a distance? And even if it could, with the help of an incredible wind, where was Bob Rann during the four days between the time he vanished and the time he landed in the desert by parachute? Now, the doctor said he babbled something about being kidnapped. Or delirious, of course. But no trace of the plane he flew or the film he took has ever been found. Kidnapped? By whom? Or what? Held prisoner? Where?